So this is probably not going to be the most fun video I've ever made. Uh, might get a bit emotional, probably gonna get quite angry. Uh, to the extent that actually the event that kicked me off wanting to make this video happened well over a month ago, and it's taken this long for me to feel I stand any chance of talking about this without just angry crying <laughs> like a nutter. But nonetheless, I kind of feel like I need to make this video in the hope that maybe even just one person sees this and if they have a kid in their family who is displaying Asperger's symptoms and is not diagnosed, maybe you will try to get them the diagnosis and the help that they need. And if you, like me, are someone who was diagnosed late with Asperger's, uh, maybe this this will just, just, I don't know, vent a bit of your anger or maybe give you something to show your family and just say, look, this is, this is kind of how it is. So if you don't already know my story, I was not diagnosed with Asperger's until I was 24 years old, uh, despite the fact I displayed pretty much all the classic symptoms as a child and despite the fact I was seen by psychiatrists as a child, as a teenager, no one picked up on it because I was born in 1985 in the UK and here and in those days girls did not have Asperger's. If you were a boy, oh yeah, you'd get the diagnosis. If you were a girl, mm -mm -mm -mm, no. Um, and you know, that's, that's something that kind of bugs me but hadn't really bugged me until I saw the incredibly stark fucking contrast in what my life has been as opposed to what it should have been if just one of these psychiatrists had have got a fucking clue when I was a kid. So basically what sparked all this off? Um, a friend made a Facebook post as I say, over a month ago now, um, and uh, he also has Asperger's, but is a boy, so he was diagnosed as a kid, um, and I I'm gonna call this friend Fred, uh, so Fred, if you see this video, this is not remotely an attack on you, like, seriously, your post is great, you know, it's great what you're doing with your life, this is, this is purely my shit, but basically what Fred was saying in this Facebook post was um, about his Asperger's and about the fact that because he was diagnosed as a kid all his life, his parents had basically been told, your kid has Asperger's, your kid is not really going to amount to much, your kid is not going to go far in education, probably not live independently, probably not hold down a stable job, you know, have low expectations. And he was saying, well, actually, now I have a degree, I have a steady job, I travel a lot, I have a social life, I, you know, I beat all the odds. And, um, you know, much as I wanted to be like, that's great, that's great, and it is great, but at the same time, <laughs> um, because basically what he had was everything I ever wanted as a kid, in that in his life, all he has done is exceeded expectations. The bar was set very low, you know, his parents were told from the get-go, your child is broken, your child is going to struggle with stuff, don't expect anything. So then everything he achieved in life, you know, however small, however big, it was like, oh my goodness, you're doing amazingly. Compare that to somebody like me, who is exactly the same, has Asperger's, but their parents weren't told that. Their parents were told, uh, there's nothing wrong with your kid. Actually, your, your kid has a very high IQ and, uh, you know, reads, reads books like crazy, speaks like they're regurgitating a thesaurus. Your child is, is going to go far. Your child has nothing that's going to ever get in their way. This was the thing that I was brought up with was, oh, you're so clever. Oh, you could do anything you want. Oh, you're going to go so far. So I never got to exceed expectations. It was, this is getting faster and faster. Blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> no, it, you know, for me, it was always like, you know, the, the bar is way, way, way up here. So if I ever did well at anything, it was just expected. It was like, ah, I knew you'd do well. And if I even struggled with something slightly, it was like, why? Why, why, why are you not doing well at this? Why, why are you not doing as well as your friends? Why? I knew innately from a very young age, I find shit harder than all the other people. 
but there was never any reason. It was always just, you are lazy. You are being lazy. There is no reason why normal life seems to crush the fucking life out of you. And examples of the ways I was aware of this and tried to get around this as a very young child, I remember watching a documentary when I was about five, six, seven years old about a girl who had Down syndrome. And I remember envying this girl and wishing I had Down syndrome because this girl was just taken care of. You know, she went to a school that was within her abilities. She did things all day that she could cope with and she was just appreciated for existing. People just loved her for her. It wasn't about having to jump through impossible hoops. It was just, you're broken. You know, you, you look at this kid's face and you know she's different and you don't expect things from her. So even at the age of about five or six, I knew something not right with me and, and that girl people see that there's something not right with her and so they they treat her the way they should be roll on a few years and when my eating disorder started at age 13 ish I think um what actually kicked off my eating disorder it's a whole bizarre story that maybe I'll tell in more detail but the real trigger point for me deciding I was going to make myself anorexic that is literally what happened it was when I read an article in a teenager magazine called Sugar and um, it was about a girl called Rebecca Garfoot. I, I could almost read you this article word for word. I, I kept it for decades, this, this article. It was this very, you know, kind of typical, condensed, overly simplified version of anorexia. So, you know, Becky gets sick, she drops down to a really low weight, everyone is terrified that she's going to die, and then she gets better, and, uh, and you know, and then now she's happy again. But what I got from this, this article was this girl made herself so close to death that her family were afraid they were going to lose her and now she has all this love and support around her and she doesn't have to achieve anything because she nearly died so now it's just like we're just so glad you're alive that's that's all all you have to do is be alive and be healthy and that's all we want for you and that that for me I was like that's what I need that's what I need to do I need to make myself so visibly ill because by this point I was really depressed, self-harming. My depression was very evident but nobody took it seriously because it's not visible. Anorexia is visible and it makes you look like you're going to die and so I thought if I get to this point where everyone is afraid that I'm going to die and then I get better the pressure will be off. People will just be happy that I'm there and that I'm alive and that I'm me and it won't be like you have to do this and this and this and do all these impossible things that you can't do. Um, so that, that was the point at which I decided to develop anorexia. And naturally, no, no, you know, you, you can't... <laughs> it, it took me a very long time to learn this lesson, but um, you, you can't communicate effectively with your family or with anyone <laughs> by by doing bizarre things like 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 starving yourself as, as as a way to communicate you you need to tell them but how how could i tell them how could i tell them i can't do normal life things i, I you know i've been saying that i've been saying i am miserable all the time i don't know how to do these things but it was just try harder you're being lazy that you know there was no word and when i finally got the Asperger's diagnosis that there was a word there was a word when I went to university I had the diagnosis there was a word I could put on forms and people understood and this friend Fred has had that all of his life all of his life he's been able to explain what is going on whereas in my case got through high school and uh passed all bar one of my GCSEs all with really great grades but you know the, the reaction was your friend did way better than you. you, you you clearly didn't study, that is terrible, that is terrible. Um, Anna dropped out of college, couldn't handle that, eventually started adulting largely with the help of a lot of class A drugs and um, eventually you know kept trying to do the things I couldn't do until breaking point happened and I had a nervous breakdown and got addicted to heroin and that was the point at which um, in drug services I was seeing a consultant psychiatrist there 
and she kept saying, I'm pretty sure you have Asperger's. And at that point, I literally didn't even know anything about Asperger's. In fact, I, I resisted getting tested because I, I said, I'm not that awkward. I'm not that awkward and I can understand body language because that was literally all I knew about Asperger's. They're weird. <laughs> They're weird people. They're really awkward and they can't read body language. And it, it turns out that actually um, a lot of that is bullshit, particularly if you're female. Your brain can mask a lot better than male brains but um but anyway eventually she insisted seriously take this test if you you know you don't have to tell anyone just take this test please and uh and it turned out I had Asperger's and I still went home thinking that's bullshit until I googled and was like oh oh okay and eventually I accepted it and was like ah yes there there, there is a reason there is a reason for everything. There is a reason for everything in my life. But I had never actually thought in great detail until seeing Fred's post just how different my childhood and honestly my entire life could be to the extent that I really do feel that not being diagnosed as a kid literally ruined my life and you know despite the fact I'm happy now, I'm doing things that, that I enjoy now, but nonetheless you can still have your life ruined and get to a place where you're happy but know that it's never going to be what it is and the the main <laughs> the main thing that i think will never ever ever be fixed um because of this late diagnosis is my relationship with my family relations on that front have have not been good for a while um because of the fact that i didn't go to one of my brother's weddings in 2012 and it was nothing to do with him it was not a deliberate snub of him it was just because this wedding was really far away it would have involved spending three days three days and nights literally in the same room as my entire family with an eight hour round trip and i was I can't do that. I'm sorry, I can't do that. You know, I apologise. I'm sorry, I just can't do that. And, you know, the the explosion that this nonsense caused is still going on to this day. Um, but my, my st I remember my stepmom coming round here, um, so that brother's mum, coming round here, and you know, and she she was trying to relate. And, and at this point, I was diagnosed with Asperger's, needs, needs mentioning. She came round here and you know and she she kept trying to relate and saying oh you know I'm nervous too I've got to do a speech and I'm I'm nervous about doing a speech you know but I, I'm gonna do it because it's family and that's what you do and I wish I'd been more versed about Asperger's more comfortable with my diagnosis at that point to say you can't relate being nervous about something to being autistic <laughs> you know I'm sorry and th this this stepmom she, she is actually a trained therapist too but doesn't get this um and uh and the the other thing that came out around this time when my brother called me about this wedding was um you know i'd always considered myself a part of this family you know 100 percent blood did not matter you know because they've been <laughs> they've been my step family since i was about three years old so all all the memories i have are being a part of this family them being my brothers however on the phone, I remember him saying, uh, you have always made it really clear that you don't want to be a part of this family. And, you know, at that point I realised they have never seen me as, as their actual relation. It's always been, you have to try harder to be a part of this family. You, you can't just be unconditionally loved, you have to try harder. But everything he was talking about wasn't anything that I specifically had done, it was just the fact that I have Asperger's. That what he was talking about was the fact that, that I'm shit with family gatherings. All my life I've hated family gatherings. I've always been hiding in a corner, under a table, reading a book, stroking a cat, not able to deal with the, with the social stuff. You know, and I remember as a very young kid thinking, why can't I be sociable like them? Why, why, you know, all of my cousins and everything, they, they just, they just chat with everyone and I just sit in a corner with a book and I, you know, I, that, that's really cool. Like, they seem cooler than me, I, I, but I didn't know how to do it. So, me 
finally saying, you, you know, I, I can't make this wedding. Literally, it's, it's an eight hour round trip. It, I have to spend three days there in a room with no privacy. People are around me all the time. I can't do it. Um, now, if I had been diagnosed with Asperger's as a kid and all of my life it had been like, you, you know, that, that kid hides in the corner of family gatherings with a book all the time because they're autistic um, and that's how they're always going to be. If that had been my childhood, my family would accept that now as something that is completely innate to me and is never going to change. However, despite even having been diagnosed now, they're, they're too used to seeing me as just the kid who wants to snub this family at every turn. Uh, th this kid who... I mean, I, d I don't understand at what point they thought I was suddenly going to go from this lurking creature in the corner uh, to, to suddenly, oh yeah, I, I want to... I want to I want to be at every social gathering. Yeah, I'm going to be loud as fuck. I'm I'm going to be at every social gathering. Um I don't understand when they thought this this change would happen. You know, I know. I know my brother's character traits. Um I know that my eldest brother isn't likely to be someone to get up and make speeches. He's he's not a super attention whore. He's not super organized whereas you know the next one down super organized um good with money uh good with technology things like that younger brother musician bit sensitive doesn't talk about things much you know i know their innate character traits i don't expect them to suddenly act out of character in some way so i'm not quite sure why my entire family um still treat me like shit like almost a decade after this this the wedding fiasco um, simply because of my innate Asperger-ness continuing into adulthood and now they know I have this Asperger's diagnosis. My stepmom, the, the main ringleader in hating me, um, is a therapist, but sh she still doesn't get it. Um, you know, so, so essentially, to stop this, this gigantic ranty waffle, um, if I had been diagnosed as a kid and they had known from the get-go this this kid is broken. This this kid is not going to be good at these things. You have to make allowances for this kid, um, and you know don't place your love for this kid on achievements. Just just let the kid be a kid, and if they achieve anything in life, applaud it. You know that 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 was all I had ever wanted. But anyway, I mean, all of that shit is so far in the past that in, in general, at this point in my life, I'm like, yeah, yeah there, there was a lot of fucked up shit uh, in my childhood. But, y you know, I'm, I'm happy now. Uh, I'm doing doing life in a way that makes me happy. I don't I don't think about this very often. But yeah, the, then seeing that post about about Fred's life and, you know, the, the fact that he has a degree, um, it's like, Oh my God! You have a degree. You know, no, you you were never supposed to barely even pass your GCSEs. You've got a degree. Me, I I get a degree, and it's just like that's not a very good grade. Um, you know, and and jobs and things. Even even after I had a nervous breakdown and was was diagnosed with Asperger's. This this innate belief that my mum had grown up with that your kid is functional, your kid is high functioning, highly intelligent, going to do everything. Even, even after a nervous breakdown, even after the Asperger's diagnosis, every fucking day I would find my email filled with, uh, with, with job application emails from my mum for exactly the same kind of job that drove me literally insane in the first place. You know, and you, you just, just anxiety attack. There would be hatred from my family, you know, when I was on disability benefit because of the nervous breakdown. You know, you just being a dull scrounger now, all of this. You know, all, all of this shit that could have been completely avoided had I been diagnosed as a kid and had it just been, you know, ground into people's minds from an early age. Just, just accept this kid as they are and anything they achieve is a good thing. And, uh, yeah, the, the harsh contrast, not, not, not only between Fred's childhood and all of that but but literally you know where he is in life now that his life is is really functional and really good now um my life 
uh, so, uh, you know, I'm happy in it, but there is so much that you can never rewind and change and that people's opinions of you are so set in stone. It's always just, you are a shitty person. You are a shitty person for not being able to do the things that other people do. It, it can't be because because you've got Asperger's. That, you know, that, that, you only got diagnosed for that reason. We don't really believe that. You know, we, we, we saw you as a kid for years and despite all the all the bloody obvious symptoms, no, we, we were told you were normal. Therefore, you, you must just do do things that are different from other people because you're a shitty person. And that's basically what you get. Whereas Fred, all his life, you know, Everyone is proud, you know, because, because it turned out that he, he was a functional person and got a degree and got a job and goes travelling and has a great social life and has everything going and I, I feel that so much of this is because everything he achieved, it was away. well done you, you weren't supposed to do this. My life, it's been, um, why aren't you managing that? Why aren't you managing that? You're being lazy, you're a dull scrounger, um, you're a selfish person. That That's, you know, that's the contrast when you've been diagnosed late versus early so uh, this is this is an angry angry waffle so I'm going to shut up here but um in essence I think there are a few things more damaging to a kid than constantly falling short I mean we are all <laughs> we are all so programmed to need the the approval and the praise of our parents you know even when you're an adult and even when you have parents who, who basically don't don't praise you for anything um ever uh, and you know this, and they know it, um, even then you find yourself, you know, where, I mean, whenever I write like a new story or a new song or whatever, I, I do find myself thinking, oh, should I, should I send this to my dad? Should I, should I get my mum to read this? Um, you know, even, even though you know, uh, so it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. You, you're not going to get anything good. You, you still value their opinion more than anyone else's. So, to constantly have the people that you are hardwired to want to please just 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 cutting down your every effort um compared to being diagnosed them knowing you're broken and constantly a sea of approval and praise and it doesn't matter what you are you are just loved for existing because you're broken and anything you achieve is a wonder so yes seriously um any any kids out there that that, that, that are around you that seem to need a diagnosis try and get them it and if you if you too um are feel feel you have asperger's as an adult and like me slipped through the cracks and never got diagnosed um i get asked a lot about like how do you even get a diagnosis it's going to vary from country to country i would say your your gp is going to be your first port of call go to them ask you know i i've done a lot of research uh i feel this this may be what's going on can i be referred to someone to get a diagnosis and hopefully that's the way forward as I say with me it was it was odd because um because of like nervous breakdown and the consultant psychiatrist kind of saw it in me so the, the diagnosis was pretty much forced on me rather than sought um and thank god thank god for that woman um seriously she, she was she was a scary woman but thank god for her yes and and if you are if you are another late diagnosis Aspie or you know even worse feel you have Asperger's feel this is this kind of rings home with you but you still don't have the diagnosis fucking sympathies dude it is it is harsh and uh and yes I mean at, at this point with my family I'm starting to think that you know that there there is just never gonna be a point where they get it at all I think at this point the the only thing to do is, is to just just GTFO with all of them. You know, keep in touch online and, uh, you know, because that, that's what I do and that, that's what I wish they would understand is that when you have Asperger's, you know, in all my life, like say, I've never been good with family gatherings, always been shit with them. Um, but the thing is, you, if you have Asperger's, generally speaking, you are very good at loving people from a distance. You know, you keep up with their online activity and you know you knit clothes for their kids and you you know you do these things that don't involve social interaction but that that doesn't mean that you hate them it just means you have Asperger's but they don't see that they never will and uh you, you know honestly I, I wonder about other things too lately I, I, I kind of wonder whether ADHD <laughs> may be something that I also have 
uh, when it when it comes to doing everything faster than everyone else, talking faster, writing faster, driving faster, walking faster, um, and uh, impulsivity. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of addictive, compulsive behaviours with with impulsivity and things. Is ADHD another thing that, <laughs> that I need to look into and potentially get diagnosed with? I don't know. But again, in in the UK, it's not diagnosed very often. And again, not so much in females because I think females don't tend to be quite so like Bleh! you know running around the house shrieking, scribbling on the wallpaper and kind of things. Um, it comes out in different ways, and they don't see it. So maybe that's another thing that, that went went un unseen, uh, <laughs> despite the fact that as a kid I literally spent my evenings running perpetually back and forth, up and, up and down the living room, uh, building jumps for myself, jumping over them and climbing up the door frames. Uh, that, that was me as a kid. But uh, no, no, just, just a jolly active child. And uh, oh dear God in heaven. So uh, yes, if, if your story is similar to mine, fucking sympathies, feel free to vent below, Anna. Yes, if there's a kid in your life who is a little bit, a little bit on the odd side, please try and get them. Well, you know, it might not end up being the diagnosis you think it is, but self-awareness is really fucking important for a kid and their family. And this is an epic waffle, so I'm going to shut up. I knew this would be depressing. I didn't want to make this video because I knew it would be depressing. And it is. It's depressing. <laughs> so I hope I haven't depressed you too much. Uh, I'm going to go and get very stoned now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>